Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Beg Pardon, Water Cooler Series. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Anthony, joined by Carlos, and welcome to the show, the greatest podcast you will ever hear, as voted on the caramel popcorn that I used to make with my elderly neighbor, Dora, rest her soul. Welcome to the show. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to try something new every week. I was going to um, say, is Dora still alive? <laughs> no, she's dead. And then you answered that, yeah, with the rest of her soul, so. Yeah, she is dead. Uh, I used to make caramel popcorn with her. So I would go across the street. Uh, she was this old lady that lived a, uh, across the street from me, and I would, like, help her with things, um, like, around her house after her husband died. And <clears throat> one of the things that she liked, yeah, right, admirable, thank you. <laughs> and one of the things that uh, she loved to do was make caramel popcorn. So I would go over there and wear like these uh, neoprene gloves um, <laughs> and <laughs> um, we'd make caramel popcorn and watch baseball. But the caramel popcorn would burn my – if you've ever made it, you yeah. have to use like hot – it's not like you're taking Werther's Originals and just pushing them in the popcorn balls. <laughs> like it's, it's hot. You have, uh, to, yeah. you have to melt it. So, like, I would burn, like, the gloves to my skin, and I, I would just look at her, like, I think we're getting rubber in the f food. <laughs> like, there was no, like, it was very, it was very, very hot, but she was so calloused emotionally and physically that I don't think it affected her at all. Um, and then we would just sit there and watch uh, the games. She also, uh, side note, crashed her car going down the hill. Um, so, I live at the bottom of the uh, bottom of a hill. And she lived like like here was my house and here was her house and it was like literally elevated like this and yeah. she got in the car and it wasn't like parked. Um, older people get forget forgetful and she goes like down the hill and cannot stop it goes through our yard and she's like being drug not really drug but her legs like out of the car completely or almost completely takes off her big toe. Slices it almost in half. Yeah. What a feel-good story from caramel <laughs> popcorn to somebody lost a dough. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, that's a stabilizer. That, that's a stabilizer. You can't That's stand. the king of toes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you're going to lose one, that's not the one to lose. No, that one or the pinky toe or the Cadillac of toes. The yeah. other ones I'll, are... I'll, Yeah, I'll, I'll lose a middle toe. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's still enough balance. I mean, you're hell, probably, then you'd have, you'd have four. That's probably more balance. That's probably a nice number of toes. You could probably wear flip-flops a lot easier. Yeah. I wouldn't want to wear flip-flops. you get a lot of stares. Imagine that. Seriously, imagine that. People would be like, what the hell? I um, mean, there are people who don't have their toes. So. <laughs> I'm sure they're good. <laughs> well, I mean, it's still jarring to see. It's still jarring to see. Like, okay... Oh, I, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything negative about people, but like you would see, you would see, like it has to be jarring. It absolutely has to be jarring. Um, so this week we're talking about the RNC. Um, speaking of missing limbs, uh, we're talking about the RNC. Wow. I'm gonna have to restart. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was so uncomfortable. <laughs> now I go. <laughs> so we're talking about the RNC today. The RNC, um, as you guys know, um, or maybe don't know, um, was held this week as of this recording. Uh, these will come out a week after um, the RNC, or after the event ends, just like we did one for the DNC. Um, Carlos, okay, first, give me your, because uh, I think we talked about this with the DNC, give me your take on the virtualness of the RNC as opposed to the DNC. Because, um, I mean, that's a big change. Yeah. I, I thought it was interesting, the backdrops they used. Um... I thought... Freedom and freedom. I, I, how... it's... I'm not gonna lie, folks. This is really hard for me to talk about. Like, <laughs> I I can't do this. Like, it was awful. <laughs> it was awful. 
and all of it felt very like nationalistic in a way and i didn't feel good anything i heard um anything i saw nothing about that made me feel comfortable about anything i really didn't i we're trying to be you know unbiased and cover dnc and rnc and i'm not a political person like Mm -hmm. i'm not somebody who's like oh i devote to my party but i just can't say anything nice about this and then you have somebody who makes an ignorant statement as your first generation born american when you're not your first generation born in the country cool i mean but you're not first generation born American. like you were still an american you moron and you made all of us look stupid and bad and that was the highlight for me of it because everything else was just lie after lie and anthony can probably be more biased than i can and i tried folks i held together more unbiased i meant yeah i i tried and i held together for a solid like two minutes but (laughs) Uh, okay so here's the thing um i think that um yes they cho- it was a very interesting um, uh, backdrop, um, especially for the first lady of the United States. So it, it never never has um, a political party used the White House as like a prop, right? Like a prop to to station stuff. I mean, we're no. in we're in new times. We are. That the, the one thing that people cannot say about Donald Trump is that he's conventional. He's just not. But that's why people like him first. The people that like him, like him for that reason. Sure. Second, I thought that the, um, you're ta- you were talking about Kimberly Guilfoyle, I think I'm pronouncing her name correctly, I hope I am, um, as the um, Puerto Rican American, um, Irish American, uh, that uh, was claiming that she was first generation born here um and i thought her speech was really um i don't know i thought it was very extreme like uh, um very divisive um now i saw that with the dnc too what i didn't think was fair is coverage of the rnc so i'm watching coverage of the rnc and Mm -hmm. people are like like she is aware that no one's in the room and she's like shouting and being all yeah, no one's in the room because it's a pandemic. That's not her fault. And it's not right. a reason to lose enthusiasm either. So I didn't sure. think that was I didn't think that was fair that people are coming after her like, "Look how crazy she is." You can come after maybe what she's saying if you disagree yeah. with what she's saying, but don't come after her for like having for being passionate because yeah. and and being like, "Look how stupid." Why should we not have socially distanced people? Um ironically, there were Many times where the president was talking with individuals, they did the cutaway of the president talking to individuals, similar to Joe Biden did. The the difference was Joe Biden was standing in front of a TV screen and everyone was virtually speaking to him. President Trump had these people in the White House or whatever other venue that he was at, and there was no masks, no social distancing, um, and they were like having a conversation there. So that was a little – that was a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought that – uh, similar to the DNC, I thought that the RNC they weren't. You're not getting any converts. Um, you're not getting any. You're not getting any major converts. No. Could you have suburban people um, on the fence, maybe leaning, um, going into uh, the Republicans' camp? Maybe. I could see that. Maybe. Um. So you, I, I mean, you see, you saw that a little bit. Um, I thought that they did a good job in having um, their their um, really the majority um, minus like Kimberly Guilfoyle. Um, I can't remember the um, the Cuban American uh, gentleman's name um, from Florida, um, but other than those two, Marco I think Rubio. The, no, he's a, a, a very older gentleman. Oh. Um, runs like a business there and he was talking he was basically comparing like he was basically comparing uh, Joe Biden to Fidel Castro um, it was very extreme right it was a very extreme um, thing and he was very emotional he was crying like he was like choking back tears afraid that 
the reason why he left Cuba and he remembered being a boy and living under Fidel Castro. Like, he w he's worried that the country is now becoming that. And he's, like, legitimately scared. So it was very, um, it was very dystopian. It was, it was very um, scary. And mm -hmm. I think that, um, other than those two individuals, I thought that they did, they did a good job um, of having African Americans and any other really racial minority uh, explaining on why they were no longer su um, supporting Democrats or why they know why they were choosing to align with Donald Trump um, and the party. What I find um, interesting, honestly, I'm more interested in what the future is going to look like because so you have the you have the Republican Party that um, is no longer. The, Donald Trump is there. There's going to be before Donald Trump and after Donald Trump. Everyone after Donald Trump will need to 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 ignite the base that he has that is still going to be here four years later, regardless of who wins. They're going to have to ignite that base, and the only way they're going to do it is being like Trump. Like similar to, I just think it happened faster. Similar to the far left with like mm -hmm. AOC. And Bernie Sanders, eventually you'll see that on the left too, where it's just not liberal enough, and you you have to have somebody. As soon as we, as soon as you have your first uh, democratic socialist president, um, you're gonna you're gonna have to maintain that mm -hmm. to ignite the base, and that's what I'm interested in seeing. I, I don't see that from Mike Pence, especially if Donald Trump wins um, in November. Mike Pence. I mean, I don't know why he wouldn't run. You know, that I mean, that would be the natural, the natural assumption that the party would back Mike Pence. Sure. Um, I don't, I don't see him being Donald Trump. You know, I don't see anyone else being Donald Trump and mm -hmm. being able to to um, to orate in that way, to um, speak to people in that way, to um, ignite people that way. So I'm very interested to see that. I think that um, the uh, the roll call of the states um, was kind of like sad <laughs> after you had the DN after you had the DNC, where I mean they 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 spent um, I mean they spent time talking about like uh, the number of votes you're giving, who they're giving to, um, the backdrops, and explaining like the beautiful backdrops, and then like. Um, it, the RNC, I mean, it was just quick succession like Alabama, Alaska. Like, it was just like mm -hmm. <laughs> one, one, one and a half second, just boom, 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 um, showing the, um, showing these people not really uh, a backdrop, not really a lot of, um, a lot of uh, uh, fanfare, kind of. Sure. Um, a lot of flags, a ton of flags. I noticed that too. Um, now, is there a, is it wrong to be patriotic? No, not inherently. Inherently, uh, patriotism is is different than nationalism, though. And yeah. I, um, you know, you that's where that's where I think people get into the debate on 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 Donald Trump. Period. Um, but after you saw after you saw the RNC, the DNC, after you see the poll so far, what do you think? Um, November is going to look like. What do you think the election is going to look like? I think who's going to win and by how much? Oof, that's tough. I think that I don't know, need like an exact number, like a land, <laughs> like a landslide, or you think it's going to be close. I wasn't. No, I think saying. it's unfortunately. I think it's going to be close. Unfortunately, um, and I know again. I know a lot of Republicans. I know a lot of Democrats. I could care less if you're a Republican or Democrat. I really could. Um, it doesn't change anything. But I feel like this is more, this election, and people always say, like, the stakes are higher. This election is far more than just party lines. Because at a certain point, you had to agree that some of these things were okay. And if they weren't okay to you, you were at least okay with them happening. And that's not a party line thing to me. So, again, if you're a Republican and, you know, you're like, Carl says too much, that's fine. Because, again, I don't care about your party. What I care about right now is the lines that you are saying are okay just to stick to your party. Like, that's upsetting to me. But I feel like Joe Biden is going to win by a hair. 
like it'll be close to the point where I'll probably be sweating most of the day and it's going to be close, but it's maybe by like that big of a margin that he's going to win. Um, just because I feel like, you know, people, you can only be a showman for so long before people realize that you don't know what you're doing. And all the bragging rights that he had before and the steam he had before with the economy and what he was going to do this. And spoiler alert, it really didn't happen, folks. And now you're in the middle of a pandemic, which is the worst. There's no two ways around it. We are handling it the worst in the world. And that's no one's fault but from the top. It falls on the top. You can blame the governors all you want, but they were listening to orders from the like from the top dog. So I think that that right there was what hurt him in the long run because basically now people are clinging to Biden to be like, listen, you might not have policies that you really explain. You might not have anything, but please, for the love of God, at least let me know it's going to be different from this. And I think, Mm -hmm. you know, like you brought up Mike Pence, I think with uh, Kamala Harris, if you don't see it in Joe Biden, a lot of people are seeing it in Kamala Harris where they feel at least comforted by her. I don't know many people who are comforted by Mike Pence. Like he doesn't even have a comforting face. Like he doesn't look like he would comfort <laughs> you ever. <laughs> like, I mean, it's bad when you go to a Hamilton musical and even like the actors give you a hard time. And that's what happened to Mike Pence. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, it's one of those things like you need to realize, I know where I'm not wanted. And neither one of them are realized they're not wanted. So, I mean, I get all the speeches they made. I'm sure all of his family members who spoke were very passionate about him as much as everyone else is. <laughs> um, uh, you know, that was a smart PR move, I guess. It is odd to have, like, your entire family um, yeah. speak on your character. Like, it would have been nice to have, um, like, third party, third party persons in your life speak to the yeah. character of Donald Trump instead of your children because we obviously know how they feel yeah you know, and you especially your your loving wife who just loves to be in your embrace and speak your claims all the time I mean she looks like the epitome of perfect marriage if I've ever seen one <laughs> so hats off to them uh, um, but I think Biden wins okay um, I think Donald Trump is gonna win I do um, uh, and by a little bit not by a lot for a couple of reasons. One, it is extremely, 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 extremely rare for an incumbent to lose. That that almost doesn't happen ever. Mm-hmm. Like it really doesn't happen. It has to be. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, pollsters, everything said he had like a sixteen percent chance of winning in twenty sixteen. Sixteen percent, and he mm-hmm. did it. His percentage is much higher now. So I, I, I think that... And then, uh, not even with him, take the tone of the country. Like, yes, we see a lot of people because of, I think, the the bubble that I live in, the bubble that everyone lives in. All of us live in a bubble, right? We watch things, we engage with people, we're friends with people whose views usually align with our own. That's usually how that happens. Um, you, have to re- you have to go beyond yourself Mm -hmm. to engage with people who disagree with you because it's just not natural for you guys to enjoy the same things and to partake in the same activities um that's fine that's how life works you become friends with people whose views align with yours right um i i think that an overwhelming amount of people um i think they're honestly they're content with the, the demon they know instead of a demon that they don't know. And, um, like, Joe Biden... I, I'm, not a li- I'm not, like, a lifelong Democrat, and I'm not, like, a lifelong Republican. Am I, am I happy about Joe Biden being the nominee? No. Um, am I happy about Donald Trump being the nominee? No. I feel like I did in 2016. I wasn't happy then either. Mm. Um... And you look at what's happening in um, uh, Wisconsin as of this recording. Um, that's in Wisconsin right now, right? The the shooting. I believe so. Yeah. 
Um, they had a, a 17-year-old vigilante from Illinois um, brandish uh, like an AK-47 and go to Wisconsin to with a, with a militia to quell the protesting. Um, mm-hmm. And he murdered two people. And they uh, he murdered two protesters. And they um, the, the sheriff of the city uh, that's experiencing all the, the protesting from the, the gentleman that was shot in the back seven times. Um, the sheriff is basically uh, blaming like the protesters. Like they wouldn't have gotten shot if they weren't breaking the curfew. He said the 17 year old boy, the 17 year old boy was trying to quell the protests and they wouldn't have got shot if they weren't outside. That's like, one, he, cause he was saying like, regardless, I'm not gonna get into it. People were, both sides were breaking curfew. So it's starting to sound like a lot like Charlotte, Charlottesville. Mm-hmm. Whenever he was like, I'm sure there's good people on, I'm sure there was good people on both sides. Like that, regardless, you're 17 years old. You illegally, you illegally took your, you took your father's gun without uh, his knowledge. You crossed state lines with it. And then you used it to murder two people. Mm-hmm. You're a murderer. Regardless of, regardless of your, regardless of why you're there, you're a murderer. And right. To, to have, you know, the, the head of law enforcement over there be like almost defending this guy, this kid, almost defending this kid. Um, I, I really think these, you know, we see it in these small pockets, but I think that's the tone. I think that's the tone that there that I, I think the Democratic Party has lost the pulse of the people of this country a while ago. Um, I think that um, during Barack Obama's administration, he did um, a, a few very progressive things that the nation, that some people in the nation were not ready for, and they're pay- the Democratic Party is now paying the price for that because a lot of people in the nation they don't want it, mm-hmm. and it's bringing out. Um, it, it's bringing out a lot of honesty. It's bringing out a lot of honesty. And uh, for the people that are on the receiving end of that, um, it's, it's an uncomfortable time. It's an uncomfortable time. And I, and, I, and, and I don't like, I'm not trying to sound like a victim either. I don't like that. Um, but I think it is, it's a very unsettling time to be a, a minority in this country. I will say that. It's a very yep. unsettling time to be a minority in this country. And, I mean, you, back in the 90s, you know, you had Rodney King. and Like, all these things have been happening for, for a really long time. And I don't know if it's because I'm older now. I don't know if it's because I, I'm more educated now. But I just see it more and more and more and more and more. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just, it's super unsettling. And I think that... If you, if the Republicans had a president who was not so divisive, there would be more um, independents like myself who would be willing to to uh, entertain or be influenced by their policy decisions. It's, but it's hard. Yeah, it, it's hard for me to be influenced by a party that I feel does not like does not um enjoy my existence yeah that's hard it, it's different if both candidates had moral issues that were similar so if they're both were like hey what's going on is awful i don't care if your policies and how you deal with it are different i care about that you deal with it and when you have one candidate who's saying like we're going to deal with these problems I'm not telling you my policies per se, but we're going to deal with these problems. And you have another candidate who year after year has made comments about him shooting someone on Fifth Avenue or telling other people to shoot looters. You have someone who's inciting this and telling you, like, if you do it, I have your back. So what does that say to minorities? Like, what does that say to you? It says that no matter what happens, he's going to have another group's back. 
So how can anyone feel comfortable voting for a candidate that does that, regardless of party lines? Mm. Like, switch up. Don't even think about a party line. Just think about from the moral standpoint, how can you back that? Right. Because if you, just, if, you, if you back that, what you're saying is, I don't care because it doesn't affect me. I won't ever be in that situation. It, it, and it's hard to um, it's hard to back the other side too. It is. I do. I think Joe. Do I think Joe Biden um, honestly cares about minorities the way in which he tells people? Absolutely not. I don't. No. I don't. Um, but the Democratic Party, and I think I talked about this in the DNC episode. They have a, a long history of pandering to minorities. There's an argument to be made that a lot of policies, democratic policies in the past, aim to keep uh, black and brown people dependent upon the government, dependent upon the party. And it creates like this sick bond um, mm -hmm. with the party. There's an argument to be made for that. But again, like I said, I feel I felt the same way in 2016. I have two dishonest candidates that I don't trust have my interests, and that's how I feel now. And it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens. I don't know. Um, if you guys watched the DNC or the RNC, um, what did you guys think? What did you guys think about the setup? Uh, what did you guys think about the format? What did you guys think about the speakers? Um, if you, uh, who do you think is going to win the election? Um, we are going to have election night coverage for you guys live. Um, so that's going to be interesting um, for multiple reasons, right? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, it's gonna be to interesting. To the least. For, yeah, it's going to be interesting for multiple reasons. Um, but we'll give you guys play-by-plays and our honest reactions to things as they're happening in real time. So no editing, uh, no retakes. Um, it's going to be unfiltered and uh, raw. Uh, straight so, from the tap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, straight from the tap. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, and thank you guys uh, for tuning into this video. Um, all of our social media links are going to be below this video for you guys, as well as links to ensure that you guys are registered to vote, um, as it is the only way to bring about change in this country, um, is to make sure that people vote. And, uh, you know, it's your duty to vote. It's your civic duty to vote. You are obligated uh, to do that, to partake in the uh, democratic process. Um, in this country. So thank you guys for tuning in um, and doing your part too. So I appreciate that. And again, as always, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there at the bottom of the video. That way you can stay yes. update on all the episodes we have for Water Cooler, which is only on YouTube, as well as our other shows, Big Pardon and Hall of History. But that will do it for us on this odd episode of Water Cooler. Uh, as always, he's been Anthony. I've been Carlos. And remember, Sometimes it's just doing the right thing. It's not party lines. Until next time.